Detroit Den 313. We are back. Stephen Will talking that Detroit Lions football. Before we get started, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Bang that subscribe button. Hit it twice if you have to, if it doesn't work the first time. Don't forget the bell icon if you, so you don't miss any of our new content. Steve, I'm excited about this one. Tell them what we're talking. Um, Big name. I, I, I like this kid. I don't think we've talked about it. I don't think we've even mentioned his name on this show yet. And shame on us. But I got to kind of tee it up for you because you're the one who found it from a CBS mock draft. They had the Detroit Lions taking Lad McConkey out of the University of Georgia. Go dogs. Hey, Steve. I like that, lad. <laughs> see what Listen, I did? See what I, yeah, see what I did? Very, very clever. Play on words. I saw it. Lad McConkey, the pride of, of Georgia. Yep. Red shirt junior, six foot, 186 pounds. I would say. He would be a fantastic fit for the Detroit Lions. Fantastic fit? Fantastic fit. Not wow. a perfect fit. Not a perfect fit. But I would not be disappointed. At pick 29? That's where they had him mocked, and I don't know about that. I don't know if 29 is a spot for Lad McConkey. But if that's where they had him on the mock draft, and we'll share the link at the end of this uh, this episode where this is coming from. But it was just kind of sparked our interest, like, you know, he, 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 we've talked about a lot of players. We've talked about Kool-Aid. We've talked about all of them. We have not talked about Lad McConkey. And then all of a sudden his name pops up on a CBS sports mock draft. And we're like, all right, no, not, not that we needed their permission to do an episode about him, but it kind of just got the ball rolling. Like, you know, is this something that could be a realistic option? So Lad is somebody that I've been, I've been looking at, man. Sorry. My head is just driving me crazy, but uh, I've been looking at as a second rounder. And I thought that it was just kind of under the radar. We got a couple of guys that we've talked about. We've kind of been keeping for our pocket for a little bit later, getting closer to the draft. And uh, when he came out in the CBS draft, I was like, ah, ah, man. But the first thing that I think about when I think about him is being sudden. He is sudden. And I'm not talking about his 4-3 speed. That's a great. A lot of these guys run 4-3s. But his ability to be able to start and stop on a dime. I think about our quarterback here in Detroit as it stands right now, and it's Jared Goff. And one of the things that I feel like Jared Goff does well is get to the back of his his drop and let the ball go on time. And I think that somebody that he had super success with that we lost Josh Reynolds and some of the things that Josh Reynolds did is he ran great routes and allowed Jared Goff to get him the ball right on time just being in the holes of the zone on time uh, being able to manipulate DBs and getting to leverage on them to where he could put the ball in spaces to where it was safe to make throws low on the way where the defenders couldn't get to him Lad McConkley could do that at an elite level like it would be Josh Reynolds and no, no disrespect to Josh, but it would be Lad McConkley day one, immediately better at it. I think that lad is a guy who would be an immediate upgrade to our offense. Um, I'm, we're really high on Jalen Polk here at the Detroit in three, one, three. I think that we, we, we talked about how he would be a great fit for the Detroit Lions. I think Ladd would be an even better fit for our quarterback, especially. He just he reminds me of a mixture of a guy. And this is crazy. This is crazy. So don't don't hammer me too much. But oh boy, uh, up, people. <laughs> but he reminds me of a guy like Cooper Cup, man, in a sense of. He can do everything that you need to be able to do out there. But on top of that, he reminds me of Chad Ocho Ochocinco. And the oh, reason why boy. here's oh, here's boy. what here's and I know I knew I knew this is where trains it left the station. Now. I knew I, that's why I said don't kill me. So here's why those feet, man. He's got some magical feet, man. If you watch him get in and out of his breaks, if you watch his cuts, he is. It's like it reminds me of like the Hunter Renfro cuts, but his feet are way faster than Hunter Renfro's. 
Like he just looks, if you watch, just please guys, before you say mean things to me in the comments, just go look at Ocho Cinco doing drills and his the way that his feet move. And then go look at Lad doing drills and on the football field, what he's doing, the way that he gets in and out of breaks with his feet is magical. I think that uh, he could be a special, special guy in the NFL. I hate you. Because here, here's what I was going to do. And I, I literally have this in my notes. I don't like to do player comparisons. So I, I did take a note that Will said that Lad McConkey will be better than Chad Ochocinco and a Hall of Famer. I do have that on the notes. <laughs> um, if I had to take two players, if I took a Monra St. Brown and Hunter Renfro and they had some sort of love child, mm-hmm. I think it would be born and they would call it Lad McConkey. I'm really pissed that you brought up Hunter Renfro because I had that wrote down. That was literally who I was thinking of, just like a sure-handed, top-notch route runner. In this draft, 2024, I think Lad McConkey is the best route runner. Now, he's not overly physical. He's not overly dominating. He's not a receiver that you're going to look at when they come out of the tunnel and say, dang, that's a guy we really got to you know shut down. That's like He's a nice weapon for the Detroit Lions. Let's just, let's just picture an offense with – Amonra St. Brown, what's he do best? He finds those soft spots in coverage. Lad McConkey can do the same thing. You got Sam Laporta. You got Jamison Williams. You never know what he's going to do. Is he going to take it out of reverse? Is he running 60 yards down the field to, to make the defense uh, stretch a little bit? We got the two best running backs in the NFL, the best offensive line. You throw in Lad McConkey. I think that's just how our offense is built. Like Lad McConkey is not a guy who's probably going to go up and catch too many contested balls. But if we can just nickel and dime our way down the field, and that's what the Detroit Lions do. We, we don't really get a lot of huge plays. If we do, fantastic. But we're not really taking, you know, five, six deep balls a game. We're just kind of working our way down the field. You throw in a Lad McConkey with a minor St. Brown and Sam Laporta finding holes and coverages, I'll say good luck th- uh, playing his own defense against us. Yeah. Like It's it's not going to happen. You better have two shutdown corners who can stick to these smaller-ish type of receivers like St. Brown and Lad McConkey because they're not overpowering but they can help nickel and dime this offense down the field and, and get in the end zone. And then, Hey, I'm on the five yard line. Here you go. David Montgomery, go ahead and cap this drive off with a touchdown. That's just kind of how we're built. Yeah. Um, uh, Lad McConkley. The, another thing that, that sticks out to me is his ability to make double moves. And with, with his footwork, I think double moves would be on the table a lot. Best offensive line in the NFL great ability to be able to run this football uh play action double moves off of play action would be scary they'd be scary man uh i I just the fit the fit to me it's a really good fit he's somebody that i would love to just sneak and get in the second man um and and beginning of the second round i don't think that there's any way that you're gonna see him be there at 61 it's just not even in the cards um, I think that he is potentially a guy that is going to slip to the beginning of the second round. And I think that we we may see he's a guy that I could see Brad trading up to go get because of an understanding of what they were doing out there. With those Rams, man, <laughs> what the Rams are doing, uh, seeing what what guys like Puka Nakua and, and Cooper Cup can do. Um, and if you can get that type of a, a guy in here that could be a similar guy that can do all the things, but maybe better, maybe better. And I'm not saying that he's a a guy that can do things better than Cooper cup just yet, but I'm saying those traits are there as far as being able to get in and out of those breaks at a special level and the elite level of speed. He has elite speed. The guy ran a four, three, four, three, nine. Yep. Yeah. And it, it, it doesn't to me, it's not just about running that four, three, it's about how he can start and stop and he starts and stops to a special level. When I'm looking at the two of these guys start and stop, I think that he starts and stops w- with the best of them, man. Like I, I, I I'll, I'd stand on that. Lad's going to start and stop with the best of them. Um, definitely the best route runner to me coming out of this draft um, this year. And I, I would love to have him as an addition to the Detroit Lions. I, Really, really like Lad McConkey. He's just he's he's a lead at a lot of things, mainly route running. And I like I said, we're not going to have a full conversation about Jared Goff, but he is what he is. You can either look at Jared Goff as a handicap or you can build around it. And what does he need built around him? 
an elite offensive line, check that box, an elite running game, check that box. So could we look at maybe getting him another piece to, Hey, we're in zone coverage. I got three guys who can find spots and zones and just sit down. St. Brown, um, Lad McConkey, Sam Laporta. Uh, I think that would just be a perfect fit for Jared Goff. My only question with Lad, how's his blocking? Yeah, uh, I'll be honest. It's it's not anything that I would I would uh, write home about because I'm always I'm always kind of looking at guys, and when I fall in love with them immediately, I try to get on the other side of it. Like, okay, what well, what are what are guys gonna say? And he's not. He doesn't look like a liability out there by any means, but he's not out there like JMO either. Like I don't see him running guys through the sideline either, or, you know, just springing plays for touchdowns, but I think that he's more than capable. Um, And I think that is something that it's the standard in Detroit. So when you get here, it's something that you're just going to have to add to your toolbox. So again, I, I don't think that he's a liability, but, yeah, I wouldn't call it a strong suit. Up yeah, he, he's not suiting up at left tackle anytime soon is what you're saying no, for blocking. No, I no. agree. I think that's probably my only knock on him. Literally like as a receiver, just a peer receiver elite blocking and eh, not so much, but we have a lot of other guys who could block James Williams, a minor St. Brown will get in there and mix it up with the block. Sam Laporta. What did he say? His interview last year in the, in the, in the, um, at the combine, I like to physically manhandle people. I mean, we got enough guys. We could probably get away with just having, someone who doesn't like to block it. I'm not saying he doesn't like it. Like he, he probably just needs to work on it. So I think it's coachable. And I don't need you to, to block him. I might just need you to get in the guy's way. I might just need you to seal something real quick so that I can have an extra inch of space. Everyone on the Detroit lions blocks. It's just kind of the, the, the mantra that we've established over the last two or three years. That's part of our culture. Now you look at one of the big, biggest blocks of the years, Craig Reynolds in that uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers game where he he put a block on, I, th- I believe it was Carlton Davis, yeah. and uh, sprung a Monterey State Brown for a, for a touchdown. That was a game-changing block. We were kind of in a dogfight with him at the time. So everyone on this team blocks. I'm sure Ladd wouldn't have a problem with it. It's just nothing special. But I don't need you you know, have a perfect technique. Just, just get in someone's way every now and then when you need to. Facts, man. Facts. So how do you think he would fit with the Lions offense? How, how, like, I tried to – really get people to picture like what our offense could be. It's not stale, but it's just nice to add a nice new wrinkle to it. And I think that's, that's what lad would bring. So one of the things that I've, I've been real big on is having that X receiver that could go up and catch the fade ball. Right. When we get into those situations to where we're inside of the 20, uh, I want a guy that can go up and just win one-on-one battles. Shoot a guy that can win two on one battles. When that safety comes over and helps, he's just too big, too strong has too much of uh, vertical jumping ability to be able to keep him from going to get high point that football. Um, I think that's not lad, but what he is is a guy that can kill you inside the red zone with elite route running. He's a guy that can hit you with that double move. He's a guy that can get to his release despite being jammed at the line of scrimmage. So I think that he fits because he'd just be another weapon that you would have to deal with, with his elite route running and timing. I think that, now, instead of being able to key in on an Amonara St. Brown and trying to pack the inside of the uh, or the middle of the field to try to keep Sam Laporta and Amonara out of there, now it would just be another weapon that can kill you with his elite route running. While I love J-Mo, love his game, I think that he has elite talent. He's more of a guy that's going to kill you with his vertical speed. He's not going to kill you with his elite precise route running. And I think that sometimes that allows guys to pack the middle against, like I said, Sam Laporta and uh, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. I think that when you got a weapon that can uh, also either break to another level, you know, so you get uh, Sam on one level, Amon Ra on another, and then you have Ladd on another level or break to the outside. You have guys that can aggressively get to their routes despite uh, inside leverage from the defense. I think it'd be special for us, man. At the end of the day, I'm still – if I'm the only one on this island, I'll die on it by myself. But for me, first round's got to be defense still. I love talking to these receivers. We've talked about a lot of other defensive players, and I'm just going to keep hammering it. I think defense has to be the priority. But there is a scenario where we could end up with Lad McConkey and a, um, a solid defensive end. If we trade back, you never know. If we could accumulate one or two more second-round picks, depending on how, uh, how far back we got to fall – I think we could leave this draft with Lad McConkey, uh, 
Darius Robinson possibly. And I think our draft would be good as much as I'm not huge on Darius Robinson. I don't think he's a first round talent at 29, but if it's pick like 36 or something like that, I'm more comfortable with it. But, um, I like lad. I just want a defensive end first, maybe not a defensive end. I think we need a little help at cornerback as well, because I like Carlton Davis. I like Amik Robertson, but what do we have after them? It's kind of the, the cupboards are a little thin, but I don't know. It's chat. It's Brad's job. Not mine. Yeah, I think I think you're going to see us draft a corner. I, I'm pretty sure we'll probably sign another one in free agency as well. Um, there's some guys still out there that we like. We talked about them. Um, we won't we won't beat it up because that's not what this episode is about. But you still got the Gilmore's of the world out there. Um, Xavier and Howard is a guy that I like. I've, I've heard his name being tossed around. So I don't know, man. I think you'll you'll see us draft some. And there's some that I like later in this draft that I think that can help this team help this team out tremendously. Um, I've even seen some guys that run four threes. Um, we had one that came on a visit visit to us, 4-3 guy from Auburn, man. We might do a show on him, so we we won't let the hat out the bag. If you know, you know. But um, I, I think there's guys out there, man. It's just so many directions that he can go. There's edge rushers in a, in, in the middle part of this draft that I think that can help this team. Javon Solomon is a guy that we talked about here um, quite a few times. So um, Braylon Trice is a guy that might be there in the second round. You know, so uh, I think there's, there's a bunch of different ways that we can skin this cat. I'm just uh, – I love speculating the ways that Brad might do it. There's a thousand different roads he could take. That's all we're trying to do. And I and I said this in our in an episode before. People are you're coming in our comments and say, "Man, you guys like just about anyone you talk about." Well, you know, it's our show. We're going to talk about guys we like. If you want yeah. us to do a show about guys we don't like, it's going to be very short. Yeah. Like it's not going to be very interesting. It's not going to be fun. If you want to know who some of those names are, maybe maybe we accumulate like ten or fifteen names and we do a show on people that we just flat out don't like. But um, yeah. that's it for today. You know, we talked Lad McConkey, a name that not a lot of people have seen in the first round, a name that I have not seen mocked to the Detroit Lions. So I'm going to share the link on Twitter um, so you guys can see where this is coming from. CBS Sports, they had Lad McConkey to 29 at Detroit Lions. I think it'd be a good fit, but I just think there's some bigger needs on this team. So leave some comments down below. Hit that like button. If you're new here, stick around, subscribe. We'll be back later with some more content. Peace. Peace.